Welcome to Deep Linking with React Navigation. This is part two of the Deep Linking with Expo series. In today's video, we'll be covering three main use cases. The first one is going to be without React Navigation, in which we'll add a listener in our app, and if the app is open from a link, we'll display the data that's received from the link to indicate that the app was open from a deep link. If the app is directly opened, the app will display that it was not opened from a deep link. Our second use case will be introducing React Navigation to the mix. We'll add React Navigation version 5 to our project, and then we'll use the Expo scheme to open up a specific deep link which will take us to a particular screen in the app. And this will be tested out in the Expo Go client. Our last use case will be to use a standalone app, that is, we'll build out our Expo app to create a standalone app which we'll install on our iOS simulator, and then we'll test out our deep link using a custom URL scheme like my app. Along this process, we'll notice how the linking module makes it extremely easy for you to open up your app to a specific screen, irrespective of whether the app was open previously or if you start an app from a cold start. In both cases, deep linking will work as expected. So let's start by creating a new React Native project using Expo. So we'll say Expo in it and we'll call that Deep Linking YouTube. We'll select a blank project, and this will create a managed workflow project for us. Let's cd into our project, and open it up in Visual Studio Code. Let's just start this project using Expo Start, and let's run it on our iOS simulator. Now that we have the app running, let's cover our first use case, which is opening our app from a deep link and extracting the data from it. The first thing that we'll install is the linking module. So open up your terminal and type in expo install. And the module we want is expo linking. Expo will go ahead and install the compatible version of the module for your particular SDK. Once that's installed, make sure to import it here on top by saying import all as linking from expo linking. Now we want to set up the linking listener when the app first opens up. And for that, we're going to use the use effect hook. So here we'll say use effect. That'll pull in use effect from React. And inside this, we'll use linking dot add event listener. We can pass in a string here, which we'll call URL. And that'll call our handle deep link method, which we're going to set up shortly. We then have the cleanup function within which we'll remember to remove the listener by using linking dot remove event listener and pass in the name of the string that we had given earlier. Since we don't have any dependencies and we want this to run anytime the component loads up, we pass in empty braces. Obviously we get an error for handle deep link. So let's go ahead and create that method. Here we'll say function handle deep link. Within this, we'll extract out the data from our link and store it into a data variable. So here let's say let data is equal to linking dot parse within which we want event.url. Make sure to pull in the event here, and then we can set the data to our local state. In order to set our local state, we need to pull in use state here from React, and then we can say const data set data is equal to use state, and we'll start with a state of null. In our handle deep link method, we can then say set data and pass in the data. Let's just save that out, and our error has gone away. Once we have the data set, here in our view, we can display it in the text. So here I'm going to get rid of this text. We'll check if data exists. If it does, then we'll say json.stringify, pass in the data variable to display the data. Otherwise, we'll just say app not opened from deep link. Let's save that out. And as we see, the data already updates here. That's because when we're using the Expo Go client, we're actually just running the app from a link. If you have a look here, our app is running on this specific address, and that's why our code here picks that up as a deep link and displays it here. But if we close out our app and then run our app again by clicking on Run on iOS Simulator, the app opens up, but it tells us that the app was not opened from a deep link this time around. Now, if you minimize this, and this time instead of running on iOS Simulator from here, we can just copy the link open up the browser on our device and paste in the link here in the browser. Due to the scheme EXP here, the browser will pick up the app that we have installed, which is the Expo Go client, and ask us if you want to open this app up in the client. And now you see that we have the link again. 
So anytime the app is already open in the background, the deep link will display the data. But we also want to know when the app opens up from a cold start. In that case, what we need to do is, we need to get the initial URL. So here I'm just gonna set up a new function. Call that async function get initial URL. Here I'm gonna set up a constant called initial URL. And then we'll call a method that's available on the linking module, which is called get initial URL. Basically when the app opens up from a cold start, it'll check for the initial URL. If it's not from a deep link, it'll return null. If it is, it'll return the link for us. Here I'm gonna say if initial URL is not null, then I just wanna set data. And then I'll just use linking.pass like we did earlier and pass in the initial URL. Here, like before, we'll first set up the listener for the URL, but if no data is returned, we'll try and check if the app was open from a cold start by calling get initial URL. So we set up an async function that basically checks for the initial URL. We first add the listener for the deep link. This we already know is going to work only when the app is already open in the background. If this returns no data, then we'll check if the app was open from a cold start and try and get the URL. Now if we save this, let's close out the app and let's try and run the app again by pasting in the link here, opening it up in our Expo Go client and there we see we're getting our data as before. We can also try and modify this by passing in some params by saying test equal to hello, searching for that and that should update here. As you can see, our params have updated. Now that we've covered the first use case without React Navigation, it's time to cover the second use case. We'll add React Navigation to our app and then we'll take the user to a specific screen when a deep link is accessed. Here, if we have a look at the React Navigation website, in the Get Started section of React Navigation, head over to the installation. We'll click Yarn here, copy this out and head back to our app. Open up the terminal and paste that in here. After that's installed, we need to install the dependencies for our managed project. So we're going to copy this out, head back to our app and paste that in. Once we have both those things installed, the last thing we need to install is the stack navigator. Come down here, go to the next page and here we can copy out yarn add react navigation stack, paste that in and we're good to go. So here on top, the first thing we need to set up is something known as our prefix. So outside export default app, Let's call that const prefix is equal to linking dot make URL and pass in a forward slash. What make URL is going to do is create the URL that works for the environment the app is currently running in. For our managed workflow, when we're testing out our app in our simulator, that environment is going to start with exp colon forward slash. When we test out our standalone app, we'll have to use our custom scheme, which we'll set up in our app.json. So let's head over to the app.json. And here we can just pass in a scheme and set that to my app. Let's save that. And as you can see here, it says the URL scheme to link into your app. Let's close that out. And inside our app, let's set up our linking variable. See here, I'm going to say const linking is equal to pass in the prefix by using prefixes and set that to the prefix. Basically, this is going to help set up our configuration for our navigator. Here, we have to then pass in a config within which we'll pass in our screens. So we're going to have two screens. The first one is going to be home and we pass in home. The second one is going to be settings and we'll pass in settings. Here in our sidebar, we can go ahead and create a folder called screens and inside that create two screens. So we'll say home screen and I'm just going to create a basic component that displays that this is the home screen. And similarly, we'll set up a setting screen, which is also a functional component, and it just displays that this is the setting screen. Back in our app.js, let's just go ahead and import these two screens. We'll say import home screen from screens forward slash home screen. Let's duplicate that and pull in setting screen. Now it's time to create our stack navigator. So here we can just say const stack is equal to create stack navigator and then when we were returning the view instead of that let's return our navigator so i'm just going to comment that out the first thing we need is a navigation container 
make sure navigation container is pulled in here and we also need to pull in the create stack navigator so we'll say import create stack navigator from at react navigation forward slash stack here inside our navigation container we can pass in our stack dot navigator within which we can pass in our two screens which is stack dot screen the name of the first one is going to be home and the component will point to is the home screen I'm just going to duplicate that and make the second one settings and there we get our home screen if we just click through to the navigation container for the definition we'll notice that it takes something known as linking which takes a type of linking options let's just highlight this and you'll notice that the linking options takes this prefixes that we had set up and it also takes a config which takes the screens so that's exactly what we've set up over here we've passed in the prefixes for now we only have one prefix if you have multiple domains you'll pass in multiple domains here and within the config we pass in a screens object that maps the screen names to the path names now here in the navigation container we can pass in linking and set that equal to linking let's save that which says linking requires a build time setting scheme in the project's expo config we already passed that in in our app.json what we can do is we can rebuild our project for this error to go away let's run it again on our ios simulator and our error should go away so now we've set up our navigation container we've set up our stack navigator we have to just see how this linking module is going to work we've already set up the prefix which says that it just needs a forward slash forward by either the home or the settings screen to take us to the particular screen to simulate a deep link we just need to run a command in our simulator so i'm just going to open up a new tab so we're going to run npx uri dash scheme open and then pass in the address where our app is currently running so that's our local host for now then we need to make sure we pass in these two hyphens followed by the screen name in order to run it on ios we pass in the ios flag let's run that and as you notice the app has taken us directly to the settings screen we can confirm that by closing out the app running that command again And there you see that our app opens up directly on the settings screen. To know more about deep linking with React Navigation, you can head over to the deep linking section on the React Navigation website. You'll notice that we've set up our scheme as suggested here. We've also set up our URI prefix. And then we're testing out our deep link on iOS using this command here. Now we've tested out our app using the EXP scheme. But what if we want to actually test out the scheme that we set up in our app.json? For that, we'll have to build out our app and then install it on our device. As expected, with Expo, that's a breeze and can be done with just one command. In order to test out a custom URL scheme, we'll head to the Setup with Expo project section. And here it tells us you'll need to run Expo Build iOS or Expo Build Android and install the resulting binaries in your emulators. So let's go ahead and copy this command here and test it out back in our terminal. I'm just going to paste that in and hit enter. It's going to ask you what you want your iOS bundle identifier to be. I'm just going to leave it as the default by pressing enter and it should take a few minutes and build out your project. Once the project is completed building, we'll get a link where we can access the project. Let's copy out this link and open it up in our browser. And then it'll ask you if you want to download your app. Allow the download. You can head over to where you've downloaded the app. Double click that to unzip the tar file and then you'll get your app. Let's just exit out our Expo app from here and let's drag this app into our iOS simulator. As you can see, that's all that's required to build and install your standalone app on your iOS simulator using Expo. Once that's done, we can now test out the deep link in our standalone app. So earlier we were running the URL scheme, which was exp followed by the local host. But now since we have our custom URL scheme, we can actually get rid of everything here and just pass in my app forward slash and then the settings page because we want the app to open on the settings screen. Hit enter. As you can notice, the app opens up on the settings screen. We can confirm that by passing in home here and that takes us to the home screen. So as you can see, we've covered all three of our use cases without React Navigation. We can access data from a link 
Using React Navigation, we can take the user to a specific screen. When we use a standalone app, we can then use our custom URL scheme and move the user to a specific screen. And all of this is made extremely easy by just using Expo and the linking module.